Hey there, lovely soul, and welcome to the May 2021 Aquarius Tarot and Oracle reading. Welcome, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign, uh, signs and cross watchers. I'm Infinity, your psychic, physical empath, shaman, medical medium, ascension coach, uh, distance healer. I work with people and animals all over the world. And I have a website called thehealingbutterfly.org. And I invite you to check it out. I have a lot of information there, the services that I provide, plus information for light workers and empaths. I have ebooks on energy and a bunch of uh, meditations on my podcast. Uh, so please check them out. And I am offering a special these days um, through the 15th in celebration of Mother's Day. And that is a, uh, I got a sale on my mediumship services. So check that out. Okay, let's get into this Aquarius. We're going to start with some tarot cards, see what we get here, and then we'll get into an um, an archetype reading that the that have been really awesome. So again, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining me. Got our first two cards, and three, and four, and five, and six here. And we have a lot of these in reverse, so let me just check in here. Take them right side up if they're meant to be. Okay, so they actually, a lot of them came out in reverse, I think all but one, but I always check in and make sure that that's actually the placement or where it's, how it's supposed to be, I should say, and um, they all actually got turned around. So they're all straight up, and let me tell you what we got here. The King of Wands coming in in your first position. The Seven of Swords, the Four of Cups, and the Nine of Pentacles, and Temperance, and Ace of Swords. Okay, so... Okay, so I really feel like there's some new energy here to get stuff going and moving. Like there is this like sense of confidence with you um, that you've already been through a, a lot, even if we're just talking about this year. Like you, you've, we're at this stage here where you're, you are able to uh, kind of perceive, understand feel more secure and grounded is kind of what I'm seeing as something is definitely just got in my eye. Um, so King of Swords, uh, there's definitely been big time guidance, big time um, synchronicities and feelings of being pushed in a direction even if you're you're not you don't like qualify it or quantify it like oh i'm being guided by my spiritual guides my guardian angels or archangels or any of that that's definitely like higher level guidance coming through to you um you've been you're definitely i feel like i'm talking to somebody who is a night I'm talking to people well I'm, I'm picking up I feel like I'm one person here right now but like this is a general read but I'm feeling nighttime activity nighttime thinking nighttime creating being up at night um this sort of thing not needing a whole lot of downtime or sleep time uh but I do feel that there's still confusion going on. We have this Four of Cups. We're looking to get into balance here. But there's still 
confusion with the uh with with having full clarity on where you're on where you're to be going or what you should be focusing in on like there's different ways that you can be looking at things or doing things. Uh, like almost like a sense of overwhelming when it comes to kind of where you want to go and all that you want to do. And it feels like there's just not enough time, not enough of you um, to do these things. But it's just because things aren't really clear with, with the, with like, the steps you're supposed to take but this will be coming in for you just go go with the flow is what I'm hearing go with the energy flow don't try to project or plan too far in advance because as we go through this like spiritual awakening and understanding our energy and feeling energy more and feeling creative for different things at different times it can be really jarring and unsettling when it's like okay I'm gonna do this and then the energy to do that is something different and we just really need to go with the guidance with that upper level see that that owl there that upper level um coming in that energy coming in I think it's when you start to try to plan and think too much is where things start to kind of get a little convoluted and ambiguous for you because the plan kind of tends to dissolve because of the current energies and that could cause frustration but it's really kind of like take try to take yourself out of control mode and be more into like guided mode have the patience because the temperance is like about balancing out and having patience for what is um, going on around you right so to do that we just need to kind of slow stuff down allow for the energy to come in because it is coming in for you Aquarius uh, and and if you allow yourself to be guided into the future of really where you're meant to go here um I feel like it's like I'm hearing take it day to day like have your big picture plans but your daily like what you're doing it would be good for you to kind of like put things in categories or themes that of the different things that you want to do and then feel into the energy and, and any given day that will how that will be like make you feel and you will actually be be progressing and doing things that you feel you should do that you want to do that are part of the projects i feel like there's creative projects it's spiritual projects it's work projects it's personal projects there's just like a lot going on here um as far as that's concerned because you are getting a lot of motivation and and inspiration coming in a lot of guidance coming in and sometimes that can feel really overwhelming as far as like what am I supposed to be doing I have all of these things that I want to do and all of this stuff that's coming and it can feel like uh too much paint not enough paintbrushes almost is what I'm feeling so or hearing here so just allow yourself to be taken day to day with the energy like where are you going feeling like waves crashing on the shore like where are you going to end up today what are you going to do today that sort of thing and and when we work with spirit and in spirit it really kind of and through spirit it really kind of needs to be more about allowing yourself to be guided like planning like sometimes we just have to plan right we need to plan and things our time and energy involves other people but not all the time not all the time is it like that um or or does it need to be like that uh let me sorry i need to get my cards got a little mixed up here so i just want to make sure they're in order here okay so what we're gonna do next is get into we'll get more clarity i'll probably bounce back to the 
uh, tarot as we get our, our archetype cards. So the, these are the, it's the wild unknown archetype uh, oracle cards. And we are working with the signature spread for this, um, these readings, which is called the inner quest is where we take one card from the selves, the places, the tools and the initiations or the theme of what we can be working on or dealing with in our lives. So first we're going to get into the selves. So what archetype, uh, there we go. <laughs> that fell out. We got the starborn. The starborn. Oh, I love that card so much. Okay, let's go next to the places. So I will read to you directly from the book for each of these cards. Okay, and the womb next for your place. And then for the tool, this is the tool that we either need to use and work with and implement, or we need to let go of, or we need to see that's in play, maybe that we've been working with that we didn't realize or whatever. We shall see what comes up here. Okay, the riddle. The riddle. Love it. Okay. And for your initiation card, we are going to get this one. And that's Thanatos. Oh, oops, let me show you Thanatos. Okay, so let's get into the book, Dear Aquarius, and see what we get here. So the Starborn, we'll get into our first card here. The Starborn, card number three. Okay, the divine child, the star child, the destined, an elusive yet radiant aspect of the self, the starborn archetype points to the cosmic spark of light that arrives with each being at birth. The moment the newborn crowns, whether vaginally or surgically, the royal stars above are said to constellate in a unique shape that maps our path in the world. The idea of destiny is controversial, yet the starborn naturally feels a sense of destination and purpose, aiming itself towards a future that is beyond the mundane. When this card appears, travel back to your birth story for clues and insight. What did you desire when you were young? Practice seeing your, seeing your life from a mythic point of view rather than a series of logistics. Read the story of the three fates and envision yourself born under the stars with a unique destiny. And when light, uh, all right, trusting, vibrant, aimed, and when dark feeling of misalignment, loss of longing. Okay, so <sighs> like I said, you've definitely been feeling and whether you've been feeling it or whatever, whether or not, either way, you've been guided and you're you're getting pushed to your destiny. Um, and like I said, it may feel sometimes like, which way do I go? What do I do? But really just keep it simple and think back to really what it is that uh, lights your spark kind of thing. Um, because you are headed in a direction that is being divinely guided, that is destiny. Now, destiny doesn't mean that every single thing and detail about your life is pre-planned or mapped out or, you know, is all set. But we have certain, like, uh, markers on the road and a certain theme of our life and a certain, you know, certain 
details that are a part of each of our lives that is a map that is kind of like the the mission definitely the mission of our soul incarnate and the starborn is someone and that archetype is someone who b understands that and feels that and believes that like there's something here i'm here for a very specific purpose or to create very specific things to bring into the world a very specific energy um or series of of energies coming in from my existence kind of thing um it talked about going back to your back to your birth story and what's really interesting is our next card here is the womb so let's get into that That's page 155. Okay, the womb. The nest, the belly, the origin. Everything has an origin story. The womb archetype asks us to contemplate the beginning beyond the beginning, the mother beyond the mother, in a world where often that often negates the power and necessity of feminine principles, this card returns us to the warmth, tenderness, and sacred intelligence from which we came. It is a card of receiving, not achieving, of accepting love from the mother of us all. She is the life-giving force that forgives and cherishes even the most wounded and disparate soul. No matter how lost you are, the womb awaits your return to help you heal and grow. This card is a call to keep things simple, to return, to be reborn in the name of love. The womb is everywhere. It is beyond gender, beyond time. We are within it as it is within us. And when light, nourishment, harmony, warmth, love, when dark, stricken, uh, ecological crisis, infertility, and imbalance so you're really being guided here to really connect with your soul origin with your soul story with your um these like deep spiritual awarenesses of self and soul and universe and mother earth and all of that good stuff of of feeling into the nurturing divine feminine aspect of yourself and just the energy of being cradled and being taken care of because you are being guided and taken care of the only caveat here is your own kind of what's happening what's going on what does it all mean um overwhelming kind of sense that can of understanding whatever it is that you are and are meant to do to allow that to kind of get you stuck but aside from that this is just telling you here that the energy coming in for you in may through the stargate starting on the 5th through the 15th we have a 10-day stargate um very very potent to our new moon on the 11th um to the full moon lunar eclipse on the 28th all of this incoming energy uh and there's a lot we have the moon shining on you we have this ace of swords coming in directly like just there's so much incoming energy to help you on your way and uh give you the give you answers to and next is the riddle so let's go to the riddle because it feels like you want answers is what i'm getting here but so it yeah, doesn't everybody but it feels like you're just like if i had more information i had like if you want to it's kind of like you want to see out further than what you have right now um sort of thing but anyway let's move into the riddle 171 okay so here's the riddle as you can see it's a celtic knot and uh and so that is also speaking to um like the infinite soul connections things like this but anyway let's go here the puzzle the question the mystery 
When the riddle is present, one must stop searching for the right answer. It cannot be found, and ultimately, it is not important. <laughs> Rather, there must be a shift from the literal to the metaphorical, from logic to mythic. You are thinking too small and literally about the situation. The riddle card appears when the energy is deep and mysterious, like the elusive wisdom of the Zen cone. Focusing harder does won't do it. Neither will increased effort, time, surrender, and humor are your only allies. What feels like the most pressing dilemma won't reveal its deeper wisdom for a long time. Eventually, you learn a profound lesson from the riddle. For now, get comfortable with the limitations, your intellect, and the reality of not knowing. It may, in fact, be the only reality there is. And when light, a great awakening, an aha moment, when dark manipulation, deceit, and trickery. So, yeah, like I said, like, it feels like you... <laughs> Like you want, like you want answers. Like I want to know before I go. And it's like, no, you need to go and then you'll know. Um, so it's that, uh, like what came first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. You're, you're the chicken and you need to cross the road. <laughs> like it's, you're the one that needs to go. And then more will be revealed as you take a step in faith another step in faith will be revealed and the easier that step will be because you are on a very specific destined path it feels like it's definitely spiritual it feels like you're somebody with greater uh, awareness on a spiritual plane and and kind of situation here um so the riddle is just here to tell you like you don't you're not going to have all the answers period you're not going to get you're not going to have all of the boxes checked so you can be like okay now we can travel it's like you just need to know it's time to go and whatever you need will come to you along the way because it will it will come into you you will be guided like this is definitely saying like look you're gonna you're gonna have everything you need that that wise owl is going to um take you there as you see she's in white the owl is white it's like they're one in the same your higher self your your uh, own soul really calling to you from the upper levels of uh or dimensions that you that of where that higher wisdom resides for you for your path and against we have temperance so temperance is also saying patience patience is key um to wish to be ahead to wish to know more um is to negate what you know and where you are now and that is what's important okay moving on to thanatos for your uh um initiation <laughs> okay thanatos death it is tempting to tempting to oversimplify death and sum it up as transformation but the true archetypal resonance of thanatos cannot easily cannot be easily assimilated or contained death is ongoing and omnipresent an eternal response to the gift of birth witnessing the ending of another being creature phase or stage has deep consequences for the psyche we are forever changed by thanatos as it sweeps us under its wings making us relinquish control in every form it every form it leaves a mark of ash upon your heart signifying we have touched touched this cusp of the underworld and will return to the land of the living eventually with more compassion and wisdom to share this capacity is needed in our world one who has faced the annihilation of thanatos can face anything when this card appears it signifies an initiation into the underworld and when light grieving mourning he, bearing witness to all that is and when dark fear or insensitivity to old age illness and dying 
So as it said here, like it can oversimplify saying death is like another way to see life, ending, beginning. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I feel like there may even have been a literal death. Somebody, somebody leaving, um, crossing over and it being a real catalyst for you, um, for some of you to really shift your perspective as far as connections and spirituality and all that too so that could be part of this um i definitely feel like that's the case for for at least one person that's that'll be watching this but uh aside from that i feel like this card is signifying uh that the place that you need to go is that like the initiation to the the underworld means to experience your experiences that to, to witness your experiences oh yeah excuse me sometimes i yawn when i start to get downloads it's really odd that that's a thing but it is so to witness your experiences from a soul-based point of view so like the death would be the the perception that the human aspect has that the ego the personality the identity has about certain situations that were i would say kind of earth shifting or shattering in your world whether it was actual people dying or um other big events that really caused a shift or 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 significant people in significant situations i'm just seeing that there's like a few of these kind of spikes in time that from an energetic standpoint that we you still have this like very real cord to energetically even if it was 10 5 15 20 years ago really is beside the point it's interesting that it's like we want to put it to bed i'm hearing we need to put these things to bed we need to go back in time to when these things were like shifting ending whatever and they were just like maybe too painful or too traumatic or too abusive or too disruptive or chaotic or whatever it was to fully accept and integrate and experience and heal from and they're kind of in in this in between mode so there's still a factor here on some level that needs to be released so more incoming information for you can take place um it was like almost like there's certain events that are just like were just too painful to even begin to deal with so you just didn't and life is busy and chaotic so it's easy to get in that boat and go and never turn never go back because there's just more and more and more and more but you're coming into the state now remember the womb and the starborn both talked about the origin story going back to your childhood birth before birth these types of things so it's like the womb is talks about like uh birthing and new and coming into creation and that divine feminine energy and then we have thanatos with death like we have these two very polar opposites here coming in the star born you born into destiny you born into this life for purpose and what that is and then this thanatos death card coming in to say um look at the the uh 
the opposite the uh now i'm losing my mind here because i can't think of the word but the uh the duality thank you the duality there between these two and saying you know we need to release energies that keep us from fully living this life because we're still in this like what happened how you know kind of mode or not quite healed from situation with that um and the riddle here is just kind of letting you know we don't have to have all the answers as to why things were. We just have to accept that they are and forgive yourself. Forgive. Let me show you this. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. Let it go. Send love to whatever the situations are. Holding on to negative energy and try to try to fix it, to try to make sense of it, to try to, um, or to hold on, holding on to it because you think or hope that it's going to get rectified or fixed or the solution will be found in another day on another day from another person or something's going to come in to, to kind of clean it up when it's really about you surrendering and letting go of that energy and the power that it has so you can move forward um, because truly death is about rebirth we can't have that exchange and transmutation of energy one without the other and you're kind of this in this in between between the starborn and knowing destiny and this like letting go of the old life the old world the old constructs the old programming the old hurts and pains and chaos and experiences need to be released so you can come into now they don't need to be forgotten but they need to be let go of and released transmuted healed like know the depths of where those wounds are and that's really kind of what this is saying here it's like it's like let's see what those wounds are and then let's let's realize that that a big part of healing is just acknowledging that this happened and or these things happened whatever the things are and telling yourself on all levels to release your connection to it cutting cords cutting energy cords would be a really important step for you to take and make here so I highly suggest you looking into that. I have an ebook called The Importance of Cord Cutting on my website, as well as the companion meditations to do for that self-healing practice to help you bring back the power to yourself from the connection to other people, places, situations, experiences, traumas, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm feeling for your last card, we are going to do the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle. So let's get into this Aquarius. Card number 10, the unicorn and the maiden. Communication with unicorn, purification, undercover action. Oh, look at how pretty that is. That is gorgeous. The unicorn and the maiden. So let's get into it. Okay, communication with unicorn, purification, undercover action. In this beautiful card, the sacred unicorn and the magical fairy maiden are preparing for a mission. The maiden lives in the world, the real world, as we say, that we inhabit day to day, day to day. <laughs> There she does undercover work on behalf of all that is magical, true, and soul-filled. 
or soul full. Her ally, the unicorn, is to go to the etheric places and share her work with the creatures too long in hiding and ask them to come forward and let themselves be known again. Together they are discovering what must be done next. The unicorn knows this information will be safe with the maiden, and the maiden knows too that she is safe with this magical creature, but they also know that there are those who would hunt down the unicorn for its marvelous knowledge, its magics, uh, its alicorn with its healing properties, and the mystic ruby that lies beneath its brow, giving those who possess it the power to see into the hearts of those around them and know their true intent. Uh, but together they know that they can do their work. They meet in the in-between places, out of sight, in your dreams, visions, meditations, and path workings. But it is her job to take the information back and to translate it into material form. It is in this way that purifying and detoxifying vast areas can take place. They both work for peace and they both are able to see right into the hearts of those around them. Among their many skills, unicorns have the ability to create peace even when confronted by great aggression. One stayed famed sorry one stayed famed war warlord genghis khan khan's hands turning him back from battle choosing peaceful settlement of differences uh unicorns also bring about the power of the written word they communicate the tale tale that needs to be told this holds true for artists too as the original language of unicorn developed Sorry, as the original language the unicorn developed was pictorial, so they are behind many film projects, novels, television series, and visual arts and and collage, most es most especially. Hmm, and visual arts and collage, most especially. If this card has appeared to you, you are embarking on a creative project. Simply ask for the help and guidance of the unicorn who will fill you with inspiration, help you through any block you are ha having regarding writing. The unicorn's horns emanates from the center of its brow, of its brow the region in which his or our third eye and third eye chakra are located. The third eye contains our capacity for intuition or for psychic abilities, for clairvoyance, and for communion and communication between worlds. When this card shows up for you, the messages you are receiving are very likely to be reaching you through that point. We can use our intent, our energetic power emanating from that point too and pray over our water to seek out peaceful solutions and to keep precious rare and sacred beings safe from harsh and toxic environments if the unicorn and the maiden appear to you in a reading you are being reconnected with your magical self with your own maiden your own pure wild qualities gentle and free fierce and beloved so is the magical creature, the beloved unicorn. Aww, this is so awesome. Div divinatory meetings. The unicorn is a symbol of ancient magics rising. And I can turn a page, <laughs> maybe. And purification of the earth and the etheric realms taking place. The maiden and the unicorn standing together indicate that you are receiving communications about detoxifying, clearing your environment, following your life path, and being a peaceful activist for change. The doors between worlds for you are growing wider and wider. More and more is coming through for you. Please know that you have a purpose, uh, which is in the moment now to help the environment you are a peaceful being sensitive and yet so very strong and powerful keep some of your works secret do not try to attract attention 
the new children who are becoming adults now are aided in their life purpose by the unicorn. It is time to protect and help something precious and threatened to survive. Bless your food and water to ingest healing unicorn energy. And reverse meanings, even though it didn't come out in reverse, I'm going to read this. Misunderstanding and underestimating your own power to bring about peaceful solutions to a difficult challenge. Feeling alone and unsafe. Unsure of whether your visions are authentic. Feeling deluded or confused by visions and psychic communications. Unsure of the purity of the source you are receiving your communication from. Feeling hunted and as though you must hide away to be yourself and be safe. Headaches in the third eye region. Psychic information flooding in in a apparent disorder. Not following through on your life's purpose or creativity. Not taking up pen and paper to write the letter that can contribute to a peaceful world. Eating and drinking food and fluid sources that may have impure origins or contaminants. Food poisoning, preservatives, heavy metals and toxins in food and water need to be replaced and purified. <sighs> so from the very beginning here, I talked about there being projects and what to do and what should you do and and kind of being overwhelmed and, and needing to have kind of a sense of like you want to plan, but it's hard to plan because new energies are coming in. And do you write? Do you paint? Like what are you doing kind of here? So this card here, the unicorn and the maiden, is coming to tell you that greater clarity for this is coming through for you. Um, this whole thing, this whole reading was about your destiny, your life path, what you're meant to do. So if it is about writing, is it? if it is about um, environmental activism, you know, it could be part of it, it could be both of those things. A lot of people write about environmentalism or, or stories that have to do with that. But the unicorn and the maiden definitely coming in to offer you a, um, a real sense of something to connect to. Like they want to like help you on your path. Like follow them is what I'm hearing. Follow them and they will take you um to they're like this is a, this is a uh, like i'm feeling that infinity symbol uh and they're like we need to go in these directions and we and sometimes it feels chaotic because it's this way and it's that way you know if we're going this way you know the the infinity symbol um but i'm seeing it like this and it's like you know you start here and let's walk on this path but you'll feel it going this way so it can feel kind of chaotic because it's the circular type of energy coming through and sometimes that can feel kind of um chaotic because it's like you can go in all these different directions or it's like where do i put my energy what do i do i do feel like there is, you know, definitely projects involved here as far as like things that, that are on the to-do list, if you will. So there is also talk about the third eye. So I would say um, that is really good advice to really work on opening your third eye, uh, listening to music, doing meditations, um, working with crystals, going out into nature. Um, really tapping in with this unicorn energy. Hopefully you can feel that connection and you can connect to that. Uh, and, and that can really help you through this uh, as far as helping you with clarity. Okay there, Aquarius. This was an awesome read. I really hope that you resonate with it and that it gave you clarity, validation, and advice for the future. Uh, please share your experiences in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. I have a lot more coming in the future. I hope you're a part of it. And don't forget to check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org, to see how I can help you either passively with my ebooks, my meditations, or actively actively by working with me one-on-one -on -one. either way welcome here and again thanks for being here uh infinite love and blessings until next time bye for now